gone to zoos all over the world. When he's in love, he drums it out for all he's worth. This puffed up bird is at home in the American prairie. There, they have communal courtship arenas where 30 to 40 males display simultaneously, but here, he is a soloist. The two females in the enclosure hardly seem to react to the male at all, but they're watching carefully what he does. They are ultimately the ones who'll decide in favour of this or another suitor. With tail feathers erect and inflated neck pouches, he's pouring out his entire repertoire. The visual and acoustic signals are apparently not enough. The bird drums incessantly with his feet. The vibration can lure females from a considerable distance. If the wooing is successful, 10 to 15 chicks per hen can be expected. But at the moment, it looks as if he won't have much luck. The ladies don't seem to be very interested in romance, but the male doesn't give up. Tirelessly, he stamps as hard as he can and utters the most tender love calls. But no drumming or cackling is any good. The object of his affection simply walks away. And there's only one person taking any notice of his courtship display. The waterfowl, too, are feeling amorous. There's continual commotion on the meadows, ponds and canals from early morning till late evening. More than a thousand ducks and geese are now looking for partners. And now and again there's friction for one reason or another. This one's vigorously defending his territory. But this bird with the black feathers is a bit too big for him, and he discreetly withdraws. These two cormorants have chosen each other. Together, they're building their nest. A cormorant home takes a lot of work to build. A considerable amount of material has to be collected before the tower of branches and twigs meets their critical approval. Now they can make love in their own home. All that's missing as yet to make their happiness complete are chicks. This cormorant is also looking for the last few twigs to complete its new home. This is Robert. He's already had his first tumble because baby giraffes literally fall from a height of a metre and a half when they come into the world. Only one hour after they're born, the baby giraffes are already standing up. In Robert's case, that was exactly four weeks ago.
Mother giraffes recognize their offspring by their smell and by the markings on their coat. Every pattern is unique. Giraffes can fell a lion with a single blow from their hooves. Giraffes always hold their heads up high, usually 4.8 meters high. But their necks still have only seven vertebrae, no more than a mouse has. All giraffes are weapon carriers right from birth. They can have up to five bony humps on their foreheads. When rivals fight, they actually use these humps. With their mobile tongues half a meter long, giraffes pull down leaves and shoots from the branches of trees. In the African savanna, they prefer the thorny acacia. Giraffes have a healthy appetite, and needless to say, they find what's growing outside their enclosure of particular interest. Trees that have been nibbled by giraffes look very much the worse for wear. Insatiable, they stretch their long necks to get at the furthermost leaves and pieces of bark. Yet they remain slim. They don't look as if they're greedy. Here in Friedrichsfelder, every giraffe receives several kilograms of fruit, concentrated feed, and one and a half loaves of bread a day. In spite of all this, they're even eating their own living quarters. It's hard to believe, but they seem to like the taste. Fortunately, this curious preference doesn't matter because the building has lasted long enough. The giraffes are about to be moved to the newly built Africanum. When this complex is completely finished, all the African fauna will be housed here. The giraffe house is meanwhile ready to move into and their keeper is trying to get her charges used to their new home. A lion might not disconcert them, but the giraffes are still nervous of their new surroundings. Their keeper tries to tempt this giraffe in by offering it some inducements. For the first time, the animal is setting foot in its new home. Cautiously, it stretches its neck forward. It doesn't want to miss the chance of these goodies, after all. But there's a limit to its appetite. It feels uncomfortable in these unfamiliar surroundings. It looks as if it'll take some time for the giraffes to feel at home here. These little ring-tailed lemurs feel thoroughly at home in their enclosure, though. They're usually born in pairs. As newborn babies, they're blue-eyed, but the colour soon changes to yellow, and that's how it stays for the rest of their lives. These prosimians from Madagascar are gregarious animals. Ring-tailed lemurs share everything, even their children. The mother's only prerogative is suckling them, but this lasts only a few weeks. By the time they're 18 months old, the young have reached adulthood and are capable of producing their own offspring. At home, in Madagascar, they obtain the fruit they love both on the ground and from the treetops, but always in groups. Vegetables, insects and small living creatures are also part of their diet. Because they feel the cold, Friedrichsfelder's ring-tailed lemurs are only allowed outside when winter's over and it's a bit warmer. The geese roam freely all the year round, though. They noisily insist on their prior rights to the island, but the lively prosimians take no notice. Oh, 
Ring-tailed lemurs like their food in large chunks. In the wild, direct from the tree and preferably without dirtying their paws. Smacking its lips noisily, it struggles with the banana. But who cares about table manners? Tasty. After all that effort, it first warms its belly in the sun. The animals like doing this in the wild as well, especially in the early morning when it's still quite cool in Madagascar. But hygiene is important too, and their soft fur needs a lot of grooming, because a ring-tailed lemur needs to look well turned out after all. Special glands which secrete scent ensure that ring-tailed lemurs have the right perfume. In the event of a quarrel, a lemur will draw its tail across these glands and wave it at its opponent. Whoever has the best stink bomb wins. This hardly ever happens within the family in Friedrichsfelder, though. So far, the ring-tailed lemurs have lived together here in peaceful harmony. This specially designed enclosure, which has been here over 10 years, enables the exotic Madagascans to feel quite at home, even in the midst of Berlin. <laughs>